this is really cool. Brad sent me the pictures of the other uh, characters that are coming out. So you might be seeing some videos pop up and I got this from Chillfly. Um, and here, what we have here is the new characters that are coming to the game, which is gonna be really, really exciting. So that's kind of what we're gonna show you here today. We're gonna start with this picture here. I'm trying to get where the pictures look uh, easy for you guys. Let me move it up a little bit. There we go. So this is an epic void. And these are, I believe these are either from the bow pass or these are gonna be coming to the game, but these are leaked, uh, AKA data mined. These are found inside of the game files has not been announced officially. So the aura is increased ally attack and all bows by 25%. And he has a dwarf epic, removes all debuffs from all allies, then heal all allies by 25%. This champion's max HP. Anytime you heal by this champion's max HP, that's normally pretty good. Places 15% continuous heal buff for two turns on allies that have a debuff to remove. That seems fairly good. Um, clan boss kind of comes to mind there. A little bit of healing, sustain, removing debuffs. Fills the term of all allies with 25% and places 50% increased attack buff on allies for two turns. So maybe some PVP in here too. Uh, since he has a turn meter fill plus a remove debuffs can be nice, but it's not a remove all or remove enemy buffs. And here we have attack one enemy, which is just basic, uh, and it's gonna have a chance of placing leech. Okay, so this is really starting to seem like a clan boss type of character for me. It has leech on basic, removes debuffs, so you can remove the punch, places healing, um, additional damage, I'm starting to like that. Then this is just kind of what he looks like there, so we can get a good image. Okay, so moving on to the next one here, which is Inquisitor Shamal. And uh, he increases crit rate of allies in all battles. And this is once again, an epic here. And uh, so that's the aura moving on to his A3. It's each critical hit fills his champion's term here by 7.5%. Whenever an ally receives a fear or true fear debuff, this skill will instantly remove the debuff and fill the ally's term here by 15%. So right off the bat, this is interesting as I believe if we pair this guy um, with somebody like Sifi, it remains you're automatically removing fear, true fear, uh, frozen off Rodos. You're basically removing everything. So this is kind of a very supportive, amazing passive. Right off the bat, this makes me think this is nuts. Um, other things that come to mind are people like Foley, maybe who remove things like stun, provoke, freeze, uh, sleep, but they don't remove fear, true fear since it's newer. This passive seems very good and uh, I don't see a cooldown on it. Normally there's a cooldown one turn or something, so he would have to take a turn, but instead this just seems like a very good move. Let's see what the next one here. Attack, this is his A2, attacks an enemy three times, will ignore 25% of the target's defense, will ignore the target's further 25% of the defense for each buff on this champion, places true fear debuff on all allies for one turn if this attack kills an enemy. Uh, potentially a Rodos killer. So what I see here is he's void, so he doesn't hit weak. He hits three times, you try to penetrate the target's defense, because if they're Rodos, or let's say their Sifi goes first, puts defense up or something on their Rodos, you hit three times, hit through that, you kill them, and then places a true fear on all enemies. Um, maybe they'll have the block debuffs up at that time though. So this would be even more nuts if it went through block debuffs, but we're gonna continue here. So that's that one. And then we're gonna move on to his basic here, which attacks an enemy and has a 50% chance and looks like it books all the way up to 75 of decreasing the duration of a random buff on the target by one turn. Counterattacks with this skill each time an enemy places a debuff on an ally. These counterattacks will only deal 50% of the normal damage and cannot be critical. So this is very good because what this means is when the clan boss goes, if you don't have a lot of resistance on your team and he places the accuracy down or something like that, he's gonna counterattack for each time. And then the counter uh, attack is gonna remove the attack up that the clan boss just got. These characters are void also, which means they work against uh, the affinity after it hits 50%. I'm seeing clan boss characters, although the passive for removing true fear definitely seems like a PVP move. The other thing is, these characters could be in preparation for something like a Hydra boss coming out. Um, if the Hydra has things like placing true fear, and this would be another way to monetize these characters, meaning you have to have these characters um, in order to do truly, you know, normal damage. The other thing is, is uh, these are so far void epics. So yes, they will be hard to get, um, but not insanely hard to get. And I think it's amazing that we're releasing a whole bunch of new, and here's just a picture of them so you can see them, re releasing a whole bunch of new um, void characters here right after the Void 2X when we all empty our shards. So here we have a, uh, an Orc, Hero 366. And uh, the basic attack attacks all enemies with one hit, places a bomb with a 50% chance for three turns. This one's again, Void Epic. So a bomb on basic and AOE form, potentially have a bomb team here. Places increased attack, 50% for three turns, gain additional turn, detonate on all bombs. Wow, that seems very good. So they're still working on the translation here, but. So he just places an attack up, 
and then he detonates the bombs. Now, if you didn't know, bombs damage are based upon how high your attack is. And if you look at this character's attack, he is fairly high at almost 1400. So he attacks up himself and detonates the bomb. This is one of the first characters I see that has the potential to actually do damage with bombs. Um, then we hear A3 attacks a single enemy with one hit, places a stun for two turns, fairly simple. Can be reduced to a three turn cooldown, but it's a two turn stun. Uh, this is a fairly good character, I think, combined with people like Longbeard, Lannicus, people that charge him in. So if I have a Shazar lead into a Longbeard skull crown this guy, what would end up happening is uh, Shazar would go place all the place a million bombs. Longbeard would go place a million more bombs with the attack up. Skull crown would charge as well with the Longbeard charge and all that and, and kill them. And then when they take their turns, uh, the bombs themselves would pop off and kill them. The other thing is I have a war mother and all the other bomb people. Um, so I there is other ways we could play around this. I, I could see something hilarious like you put Frenzy set where he, when he loses health, he takes a turn. So the idea is you have a, a three soul drinkers that just die. He loses health, but you make them really tanky. He gets an automatic turn, all the soul drinkers die, then places the bombs on them because they're low level. Everyone just attacks him and kills him. And then what happens is he detonates all the bombs from the soldier. You know, I'm sure there's some kind of cheesy teams we can do here. They're just coming to my mind as I'm looking at it. Um, so that's that's the guy's uh, skill list. He actually looks fairly, so far all these characters look fun and interesting. Uh, here is Roz and Scarhide Jr. apparently. And oh, I guess this. Uh, <laughs> oh God, snuck out of nowhere. Okay, resisting all battles. That's the aura. Uh, when attacked has 50% chance of placing a poison debuff on the attacker. Receives 15% less damage from enemies under a poison debuff. Okay, so he places straight up 5% poison when he's hit. That could be interesting. Um, let's see here, attacks all enemies. Uh, has a 50% chance of placing provoke debuff for one turn if the target is under a poison. Oh, okay, places counter attack on them. So it's an AOE, which books up to 75% of placing a provoke on them if they're under a poison and then places a counter attack on them. Seems like kind of a worse Angar. Uh, move there. I'm not too impressed with that one, but you know, it, you place the poisons and you do it, I guess. Uh, attacks one enemy has a chance. Uh, this is the basic, by the way. Goes up to, it looks like a 50% uh, here of placing a 2.5% poison. Uh, places an extra hit if the target's under. Po I don't like that because 2.5% poisons are essentially useless. They they block up the thing for Void Epic. Uh, trying to think if maybe. Maybe this combines with, yeah, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that one. That's what he looks like. And then we got another one here. Uh, Crown Druid, okay. Places a perfect veil buff and a 15%, this is his uh, A3, and a 15% increased attack on all allies who attack is higher than their defense. I like that. See, I like these moves that are kind of new. Um, all allies who attack it. So if you build someone with attack, you can hide them, but the people who are tanky do not get hidden. Places a 60% increased defense for two turns and a block debuffs for one turn all allies whose defense is. See, this is great. I like that a lot. So it perfect values the attackers and tanks up the tankier people. That is a really cool move. Um, very good for an epic to a normal epic, not a void. I like that a lot for the druid. Uh, let's look here at this. So that's the first one. Let's look at the second one here. This is Crown Druid. He's an epic lizard man. He was all enemies by 15% of their max HP. Places shield buffing with their 15 max. I don't really uh, care for that too much just because their max HP. Um, but this might be nice in addition with the other one where you're kind of healing the allies and you know tanking them up when they go under. That's just kind of an okay supportive move. The A3 is really good. So the other moves probably aren't going to be too nuts. Uh, let's see, attacks one enemy, 30% chance, which is booked to 50, increasing duration of random. Yeah, so like the other moves aren't nuts, um, but his A3 is is very disgusting. Kind of kind of like a mini Sifi in a way. It's a normal epic. I think that's really cool. I like that a lot. So these are the new characters. Let me know what you guys think of these new characters. For me, um, I would say there's multiple winners in here. Honestly, I kind of like all of these, except the, the miniature Rosin was kind of like, I would say disappointing. The other ones look really good. I mean, good enough to the point where I would want these void epics and not just because I'm a collector. I think there's actually something here with these ones. And uh, the in particular one that's interesting to me the most is whenever an ally receives a fear or true fear debuff, the skill will instantly remove the debuff and fill the allies term here by 15%. I think that's, that's really good for people that are going second uh, like me. I go second quite 
often. So let me know what you guys think about this. I will be excited uh, when these get released. Thank you again to Chill Fly Elite for giving me uh, the Davy mining info or the pictures here, as I don't really do that myself. So I, I appreciate uh, having that. And you guys can check out his video as well. And I'll put the description to that in the top link for that way to give credit to the person. All right, guys, please subscribe if you have not already for more daily content. I love you. I love all the support. We've got a crazy amount of support lately, I have to say. So thank you very much. And I will be live at the reset once again, like I always am. And I'll see you there.